Hello everyone, this is my Kenmore HE3 washer that I bought at Sears in 2006 and I finally got an F11 code January 2016. Can't demonstrate the code right now because I already got my replacement circuit boards. But what happened was when I closed the door, the door would lock, water would get injected, and the drum would not spin. So after the water injection, I would get an F11 code and it would start beeping. From research online, I found out that the F11 code is because there are two circuit boards inside the washer and the two circuit boards can't talk to each other anymore so that's why you're getting the F11 code. So I already got my replacement boards and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to put it all back together. Uh, these are the tools that I'm going to use to remove the screws. I have a 5 16th driver or you could use a 7 millimeter driver if you don't want to use the ratchet you could also use a t20 star wrench or star bit uh, the flat screwdriver is to help remove some of the plugs and pry out the uh, circuit boards the wire cutters were for cutting the uh, cable tie when I had to remove uh, one of the circuit boards because uh, there was a cable tie tying the wires together. Here's a new uh, cable tie to wrap them all back up. Uh, I'm going to use an anti-static wristband just because I'm working with uh, electronic circuit boards. I don't want to end up damaging them from uh, static electricity. And the multimeter was to try to help troubleshoot it. Uh, my multimeter doesn't really have continuity. So I had to measure resistance to find out if some of the parts were working. So I'm going to go ahead and take off this top cover first. There's three screws in the back. One screw here, second screw there, and we have a third screw right there. It's probably helpful to have a magnetic uh, pickup just to help you pick up the screws if you do end up dropping the screws back there. Uh, this washer is very heavy and I don't think I can move it with uh, just myself. So before you even open the washer, go ahead and make sure you unplug it. So I went ahead and removed the three screws. So all you have to do to remove the top cover is to slide it back. and then lift up to remove it. So I already removed the uh, CCU board the central computer unit I guess it's called and once you open the top cover you could see why it's so heavy you have these concrete counterweights that make it extremely heavy and before you even disassemble the CCU make sure you label or take pictures to 
so you can figure out how to put the wires back on. So I went ahead and put on my uh, any static wristband. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this on an unpainted metal surface. So here is my CCU and it goes ahead and clips on like this and I'm supposed to shove it so the tabs lock into those two holes uh, when I removed them all I did was use a flathead screwdriver to kind of help pry it get it loose now you want to be careful so that you don't break the plastic because this plastic could be old and brittle. <clears throat> right, that locked into place. Now it's helpful to take pictures so you know how the wires go back into these wire guides. And also helpful how to plug them all back in correctly. Now you could tape them and label them, but I went ahead and took pictures of them. So I'm using this picture on my camera as a reference. And you have these wire guides right here. And then you have this big wire harness. under on this tab and we have this wire harness here goes through this one so it looks like the wires are away from any of the moving parts and I'll go ahead and start plugging them in this grounding wire and looks like in my picture this grounding wire goes all the way to the right and this black wire goes in here white wire goes into this one labeled MS2 then I have this black one square one that goes into DL3 make sure they're all plugged in nice and snug DP2 is this one. Now I'm going with my blue wires. This pink one, VCH7.
the white one as DL6. Moving along, we're going back to the black ones, TL2, it's this one. PR6 is another black one. I have this blue one right here. That doesn't go into this one, but goes into the second one. This gray flat one that's going in the next hole that just goes under and then the next one I have to get it in alright it's in it's a pink piece of tape on it red or pink and this is the cable that actually allows the CCU to talk to my second circuit board which is the MCU and that goes into the next hole it for the CCU. Now before I put this back, I think I'll go ahead and at least put the cover back on and then I'll work on putting the MCU together and lay the uh, cover back on. And then to close it, all you have to do is slide it forward and put the screws back on. I'll put the screws on after I finish putting the MCU together. And the MCU is accessed on this bottom cover. So to work on the bottom panel, I went ahead and put a creeper on the floor. And... Like the top cover, there are three screws. And I'm gonna use this T20 star bit since it gives me better access. I don't have an extension for the ratchet. Screws are under here. Got one, got two, got three. Now when you're unscrewing these, uh, Just watch out because this cover will drop down. So I took the three screws off. And the cover dropped. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this off to the side. I'm gonna take a look at what's under here. There's a motor right there. Uh, you have sort of a, I guess a filter where stuff may have dropped from your wash. You can open this and clean it out if you want. Again, you have a concrete counterweight, which makes this wash extremely heavy. And it's also important to note that uh, when you have to move your washer, you have to install some bolts so that this drum doesn't move during the move and break your washer uh, if you lost your bolts you can always get them from searspartsdirect.com 
and I'll go ahead and start putting stuff together. So what I have is the multimeter. Uh, I got this basic one from Radio Shack. I'll get a measurement. That shows zero right now instead of OL. Uh, higher end multimeters have a continuity function and it'll actually start beeping to let you know. But uh, I didn't spend the money. So what I wanted to do was there's this blue wire right here for the harness. This goes into the MCU and this connects the CCU on top to the MCU on the bottom. Now when I measured my old CCU, I was getting OL, meaning there was probably no resistance, meaning that my board, my CCU board was broken. I'm resistance number now that I have it in when I was measuring it with my old board I was getting OL and now I have red in the middle black on the left 19.9 I don't know what these numbers mean but if I'm getting a value it probably means my CCU is good and I have some sort of continuity on that CCU board so right now I have my CCU protective plastic box here all I did was take out my old one that used to be in here and it's important that you put it back into this protective box because to remove the old one I had to cut the cable tie right here there's a cable tie there's a plastic tab that I left there what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the new one and put the new one in and this is for wrapping up the wires later so I'm just going to leave it in like we'll that go ahead and connect to a metal surface I have my MCU board here from Circuit Board Menix. This is my original board. Uh, you want to be careful with these tabs. Make sure you don't break them when you remove the wires later. The box is, is a piece of double sided tape. It's optional if you want to make that. sure that the plug side goes with the opening of the box here because that's where the plugs are going to go so I'm going to take this put it against the tabs back here and I'm going to go ahead and push down make sure it's lined up nice and flush nice and flush go ahead and push down all right it's locked in now I have to go ahead and put it back inside all right I'm gonna try to put this back together got my ground better safe than sorry According to circuitboardmax.com, it's easier if I disconnect this tab here to kind of get the plastic out of the way, makes it easier to put stuff in and out. in here oh, I don't think it's 
Push on it to lock them in. One, two, no. Move the wires. One, two, three. Locked in. I'll put the wires back into the wire guy. Black one. Black one. Uh, there's only one way this will go in. Uh, there's a notch right here. It'll go into that hole. So that means the wire should be coming out on the left. Might be hard to put this in. communications wire now when I first put it in I put it backwards this is the only wire that you can put in backwards it is back this is the correct way to go in it should be the same way as the black wire how the wires are coming out on the left Secure these tabs. <laughs> and I'll try to, uh, let's try to wrap the 
of stuff to pick. Neat. Try to press that back in. All right, I'll go ahead and put the cover back on and let's test this baby out. Hold it. And I'll try to put these screws in together. Screws are in, covers on. I still have three screws on the back that I haven't installed yet, but I want to try to test this baby out. Make sure it works before I tighten it all back together. Alright, I'm going to go ahead by pushing drain spin. That's always been selected. No spin. And then pre-wash four times to get into this diagnostics program. One, two, three, four. All right, C zero zero. Door is locked. So with the F eleven, I was unable to have the drum spinning. And usually by step two, I'll get the F eleven code, but. Crossing my fingers and hoping the program continues. Looks like my F11 problem is going to be solved. Step 4 is where the drum actually spins. If I see the drum spinning, I'll be happy. I also have the option of skipping by pushing pre-wash twice. I'm going to skip this and try to go to step 4. 1, 2, step 4. All right, the drum is spinning. Looks like my F11 problem has been solved. 
All right, I'm gonna check out step seven also. One, two, six is the drain, drain's working. I'll let it drain all that water out. Going to step seven. Got spinning in both directions. Step eight looks like we have high speed spin. Done with this. Ladies and gentlemen, looks like I fixed my washer. Try not to drop them because they'll be a pain to grab. <laughs> 